Hello, my name is Charles Lincoln, and I'll be doing a presentation on Kirkhart Morris in regards to European case law in the ECJ case in regards to, and in regards to broader policy implications for double taxation in the European Union for European Union for the Advanced European Union Tax Law Module with Dennis Weber today, January 25th, 2017. Now, let's jump straight into the facts of Kirkhart Morris. There was a couple who lived in Belgium in 1995 and 1996. They received dividends from a company in France. France withhold, withheld 15% pursuant to the French domestic withholding tax laws. Belgium did not apply the credit system for any of the taxes paid on the French withholding tax, despite there being a Belgian-French treaty. Belgium then taxed the dividends at 25%. Thus, they paid more taxes than dividends coming from a Belgian company. So, let's look at the process up here. Now, you see here is the domestic slides right over here of... Uh, if dividends were just coming from Belgium, you have a thousand worth of dividends. You have twenty-five percent uh, Belgium income tax, and then it's just two hundred fifty of the of the thousand. That's one thousand. It's seven hundred fifty. Then consider the French situation. You have one thousand. You have the one hundred fifty dividends, and then you have eight hundred fifty as a taxable basis in Belgium. Then. 150 uh, or 850 is the taxable basis. 25% of that is 212. And then the 212 of that is added with 150, which is a total tax liability burden of 362, which leads you to 367. So that was an issue. So the procedural posture, the posture of the case was that the, uh, the, 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 the Kirkhart Morris couple took up the case to the Belgian highest court, and the court requested a preliminary hearing from the European Court of Justice to determine whether or not the imposition of double taxation violated Article 53 of the Treaty on Fundamental Freedom, restricting uh, the free movement of, uh, of, ca of capital. The commission stated, uh, so there, there were two views that we're going to look now, is the commission's view and the, the attorney general's view, uh, the advocate terms. First, the commission. The commission stated that the European Union, the European Court of Justice, uh, should not force Belgium to give a tax credit because it would be in violation of EU fundamental freedoms. Advocate, uh, Gilhold, advocate General Gilhold uh, argued that the, the juridical taxation was a quasi-restriction and it, it may only be eliminated through intervention of a community legislature. So here you have the European Parliament, and here you have uh, an indication of what the Advocate General's office looks like. So, the European Court of Justice stated in its opinion that parallel exercise of, uh, of taxing jurisdiction, even if it leads to double taxation, is within the sovereignty of the states. And thus... The cross-border situation, although less favorably comparable to the domestic situation, is not a restriction on the free movement of capital. Now, if we look to our Tara Vattel book, uh, Professor Vattel, and, uh, who wrote the specific chapter uh, uh, that discussed the, the Kirkhart Morris case in depth, discussed how the comparability standard is needed to decide whether the two positions are comparable from the point of view of the objective purpose of the impunged national measure assumption of taxing jurisdiction is national sovereignty, but the exercise of the jurisdiction so assumed is subject to court scrutiny. Tara Vattel appreciated uh, the European Court of Justice balancing the interests of the internal market with the legitimate interests of member states rather than pronouncing the laws, Montague states here in French, and that Tara Vattel cites in French, that they should not be ruling from the bench. So, now that we know the Kirkhart Morris case, let's go straight into the Maryland v. Wine case, which essentially has the same facts, the same facts as the Kirkhart Morris case, yet came to a different conclusion. So, basically, Maryland's tax schemes, which income uh, were, was taxed on a worldwide basis, uh, within and outside the base, did not provide to residents with a full, with a credit of taxes uh, that they pay to other states and thus violated the Dormant Commerce Clause. So the let's just uh, get grounded in the Commerce Clause. is very important for your American case law to regulate the commerce with foreign nations among the several states, uh, which is Article 1, Section 8, uh, Clause 3 of the Commerce Clause. Now, basic system of the Maryland uh, tax system, 
The basic structure of the Maryland tax system is that it's two tiered. You have state level taxation and you have county level taxation. The county, the state level provides a tax credit and the county level does not provide a tax credit for taxes paid abroad. Now, the facts of the Comptroller of the Treasury of Maryland versus wine are this. The wines were in residence uh, in Maryland and they were receiving dividends from Utah. Double taxation on the county level occurred because there was no credit given for the paid taxes paid in Utah. And thus, the question was whether this duplicative state level of taxation was in violation of the Dormant Commerce Clause. So, Justice Alito pointed out that the test for violation of the Dormant Commerce Clause with regards to taxation is two-pronged, and it's called the Internal Consistency Test. Now, to survive uh, Dormant Commerce Clause scrutiny, Maryland tax needs to be internally consistent. And in addressing internal consistency, the court needed to examine the court, Maryland's personal income tax scheme as a whole. So, the test in at least has been used in at least uh, seven previous U.S. Supreme Court cases. So that's some good precedent upholding the case. But the question was: Would the interstate and interstate commerce be equally uh, taxed equally if every state were to adopt this precise tax, which is the crux of the internal consistency test? And Maryland failed the test. Now, the failure of the Maryland. Can, uh, uh, into Maryland, the failure of the Maryland uh, tax on the basis of internal consistency was that it was inherent in the Maryland's tax scheme and that the tax scheme operated as a tariff because it discriminated against interstate commerce, i.e. the internal market of the United States. So the court did leave some open questions on how to solve these issues. It did not legislate from the bench so to speak. It just it did not solve the problem. These questions were not presented before the court, and the court stated that it does not solve questions which aren't before the court. And it stated that uh, a credit system would be possible. It also, Maryland could change its tax system to a territorial system because that does not lead to taxation on, uh, it does not lead to double taxation within the United States if every state adopted a territorial system. Now, some final thoughts. Again, just like in the ECJ case ter uh, that Tara Mattel pointed out, the Montesquieu, the court did not legislate from the bench. They did not speak from the bench. So, question that uh, we should ask ourselves, should Europe adopt an internal consistency test akin to the United States? I contend there might be a reasonable probability that they should do that because it had promoted good results from the founding of the Union in 1789, or from the founding of the Union's Constitution in 1789. This provided a strong central uh, commercial activity of the Union that has also been decentralized at the same time. So the solution could be the Commission's idea, which is to use the tax treaties and uh, OECD models. Uh, to relieve double taxation. Another possibility is for EC legislatures and the European uh, Parliament legislatures to create a European framework for the division of taxing rights. Or the e ECJ could uh, relieve double taxation without the former two. And also, another interesting side point might be that the CCTV proposal, CCCTV proposal, might uh, relieve double taxation, perhaps just for corporations, but perhaps a similar CCTV, perhaps a consolidated individual income tax basis could be uh, adopted as well. And as I had said, uh, the, the the internal consistency test did not exist prior to the 1930s when the New Deal was sweeping throughout the United States and changing the United States economy after the Great Depression. So my question is, should there be a New Deal for Europe? Thank you very much for your time.